Hello, I'm Karen Assol, and I'm an Emerging Technology Consultant. I provide education, consultancy, and advisory services to organizations and people who want to know more about technologies such as blockchain, cryptocurrency, AI, big data, and analytics. In this video, I'm going to explain what a non-fungible token or NFT is, and why everyone is getting interested in them, what the four main types are. So let's begin by explaining what fungibility is, and what non-fungible means, and how a token is used. The fungibility is the ability of an object, item, or asset to be exchanged or substituted for something else that has similar characteristics. For example, a £5 note can be exchanged for another £5 note, as the only difference is the serial number, the value remains the same. Also, that £5 note can be used for multiple purposes. It can buy coffee, bread, pay for someone's time, or whatever. Same with cryptocurrencies, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, with both of these, you own an amount and not a specific coin. We describe something as non-fungible when it's unique, original and authentic and retains its own value, not, not something general. It can't be exchanged like for like, so you can't exchange the Mona Lisa, for example, and it's not divisible, well, not without losing its value. So something that is non-fungible is also scarce. There's only ever one of it. Sure, there may be copies, counterfeits or replicas, but there's only one original. And scarcity can lead to an increase in value. And that's why an original artwork is valuable, whereas a photocopy of it isn't. Finally, a token is something that acts as a digital certificate of authenticity and ownership, and is stored on a blockchain. It may be stored simply as a record of ownership, or it may be stored within a block of computer code called a smart contract. The blockchain acts as an immutable ledger of ownership and is publicly verifiable. This means we have an irrefutable evidence of ownership, originality and provenance. So let's take a look at some NFT examples. And um, one of the original ones was CryptoKitties, uh, which came out a couple of years ago, really popular. Then we have things like video games. We have uh, intellectual property that's appearing to go on to NFTs now. Then we have things like the US NBA Top Shots, which has generated over $330 million so far. Uh, we have things like digital share certificates that are coming along. And then we have things like NFT uh, name servers. The most popular area at the moment with NFTs, though, is certainly digital art. And the one that's really hit the news of late was with Beeple, and that raised $69 million. So this shows that NFTs can be really worth something at times. If you want to take a look at some uh, NFTs, you can check out OpenSea.io, or there's also Rarible.com and also SuperRare.co. So let's take a look now at the four types of NFT. And the first type is a simple token that represents an individual digital asset. Nothing, nothing fancy, and it could simply be a cryptographically hashed representation of a piece of digital work with a hash stored on a blockchain. There's plenty of examples of the Bitcoin blockchain being used for this, as a Bitcoin transaction format actually includes a small free text area into which the hash can be stored. The second type of NFT is a programmable token that can represent an individual item or collection of items and has an executable wrapper around it. For an artist or musician, this provides a means for residual income where when the asset is resold or reused, it means that um, there's a record of the ownership transfer, the usage and license fees all maintained and can all be viewed. Rather than the digital assets, whether they're artwork, images, music or video, being stored directly on a blockchain, they're stored on IPFS or Interplanetary File System, which is a distributed and decentralised storage facility. The blockchain stores the hash and points to the assets on IPFS. The third type of an NFT is what's known as a composable token. Based on the ERC-998 standard, it allows you to group fungible tokens such as the token used for fundraising or what we used to call ERC-20 with non-fungible tokens. Now they can be traded as a single parcel as opposed to individually. Now, this is getting a bit geeky, but it means that you could have pieces of digital art inside a virtual house, inside a computer game, and you could trade all of them as a single unit. They're certainly being seen as the next big thing in gaming. And then there's another standard, the ERC-1155, which may gain traction outside of gaming. Finally, the fourth type of NFT is an NFT that is created from an NFT. It's early days with this, but we're seeing this extending into the realms of artificial intelligence, so it's likely to be a topic for the future. To summarise, NFTs are programmable tokens on a blockchain that represent the ownership 
of physical or digital asset. So I hope you found that of interest. Don't forget to click on subscribe if you're on YouTube or click on that like button or the reminder button uh, or feel free to get in touch with me directly.